<clears throat> All right, so film. Um, you know what I want you to start off with? What do you want me to start off film? Which one's my favorite film? The Men's Special. You loved it so much. Ugh, everyone else loved it. I think they must have been on crack. Um, Midnight Special is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. See, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see it, um, but I, maybe it's because I'm biased and my brother runs an Alamo, <laughs> and I like what Tim Leap recommends, and uh, he's never wrong. Mm. But Bethany's been wrong. I, Supergirl sucks. I'm, okay, I never said Supergirl go. I just like superhero TV shows, and The Flash was on. And, <clears> was, <throat> but, 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 but that's, that's not South by. That's not South by. Stop that's fucking up. Be professional. Girl, <laughs> fuck up. Be professional. But Midnight Special. Okay, so first off, South by it's different when you watch a movie during the festival. The star one, the stars are there. Like if you've never been to a film festival, it's it's a very different vibe than if you're like. Star Wars is probably the closest thing I can kind of compare it to. If sure. you've never been to a festival, but you've been to like opening night of a movie as mm. big as Star Wars. People are excited. Oh, the audience is so energetic. Yeah. Um, people are dressed up or whatever, you know? Mm. So, so that's like the Star Wars experience. South by is the same thing. You're, you're in Austin. A lot of the movies are filmed in Austin for South by. Like, they do a really nice job getting some sort of local emphasis. It's like the opening night film, Everybody Wants Some. It was a Richard Linklater. The guy's based in Austin. All of his movies have some sort of Texas relation. We heard quite a, because I do Q&As after the films with the cast, director, whatever, whoever's available. And I, that was kind of, I saw a common question this year. It was just like, what is this, uh, you know, what does this do have to do with Texas, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There seemed to be a lot more of that this year. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe there's always well, been that. Just start, like, like Shep, um, that's a movie. If you that was from a few years ago at South by, um, and I mean, they go cross country, but they stop in Austin. And when they're in Austin, like, you know, you're at the screen during South by, people cheer, they cheer when they see yeah. there's a lot of local like sports team, a you lot know, of local, local sports team, you know, so they get excited. They're yeah. like, oh my gosh, someone made a movie about my so place. Anyway, Midnight Special. So Midnight Special, director Jeff Nichols, um, he did uh, Take Take Shelter, so he's done some great mud, he's done some really great movies. That was fucking movies. fantastic. McConaughey, um, baby. Yeah, but, so this is, but this is like one of his first big forays into sci-fi, um, so everyone was excited, he has this Austin connection, the movie's not based in Austin, um, but, but he is, Jeff Nichols is, he's there, the cast is there, so people are freaking out, they're like, oh my god, there's Kirsten Dunst and Michael Shannon and Joel Edgerton, so cute, like, you know, people are excited, like, they're taking pictures, because you're watching it right next to the person, I can turn to my right, and there's the star, um, so you're excited, and you want to be polite, so, like, even during the credits, people cheer just during the opening, like, oh my gosh, that person's here, so we gotta clap and cheer for their mm -hmm. name, that, that's all South by screenings, anyways, this movie was the worst. <laughs> I'm watching it, and at first I'm a little bit intrigued. Like, if you've looked at the movie poster, it's just this kid wearing these blue goggles, and you're just like, swimming movie? What's going on? Like, like, something out of ET or something. Yeah, like, he looks a little bizarre. You're just like, what? Well, WTF. Mm -hmm. So you're thrown into the story, like, right away. And, and I admit, I was actually a little bit intrigued at first. I'm like, what's the deal with this kid? Um, it looks like he had been kidnapped, but. He's not under distress, <coughs> you know, like, so it's not like your normal kidnapping because any kid, like, if you're taken away, like, there's news stories and helicopters searching for him, and, um, but, but he's relaxed. I mean, he's going along with it, so I'm like, okay, so was he really kidnapped? Why was he kidnapped? Like, what's, what's the deal? Um, and Where's then, Adam Driver doing the film? Well, he's, he's part of the government group that's looking for this kid, so there's kind of, He's part of the Empire again? He's part of the Empire again. He's actually a good guy in this one, though. He's so a good he's, guy in Star Wars. <laughs> well, I don't think he's supposed to be a good guy in Star Wars. That's just your opinion. <laughs> um, anyways, Midnight Special. They had me for like five minutes, and then they started to reveal things. And as they started to reveal more and more, I got increasingly frustrated. Because first off, I realized very quickly, they had no idea what they were doing. They had no plan for this kid's powers. One second it matters that he's wearing goggles, the next second the goggles are irrelevant, the next scene they, they matter again. And I'm just like, what, like, why? Like, what's going on here? Like, get some consistency about this kid's powers. Um, there's some stuff that's really intriguing, like, the, the kid has basically escaped from this church cult-like organization, they're hunting him down, so I'm like, oh, that's kind of, like, intriguing. I want to explore this more. And there's a lot that should explore spirituality and what it means to be spiritual, and what it means to believe and have faith. Or but be they, silly. But they don't do anything with it. They kind of dangle these things and they're like, that's enough for they you. They don't drive it home. They don't. They don't. And it's so like <coughs> half-ass 
last and half baked and at the end of the movie not even at the end of the movie midway through the movie i'm like wait a second i've seen this before you know where i've seen it before fucking disney did it with race to which mountain they even remade it with the rock who's awesome dwayne johnson's the yeah, best so you have a special kid some special kids in race to which mountain um they they have to escape from something and they have to get us to a specific location is it a mountain um, no, in this case it's a field and some like ridiculous, there's like bugs out here, <laughs> a field and some like ridiculous city thing, which isn't a spoiler because they already put it in the stupid trailer. They gave every little thing that they had to give away away in the trailer. So, I don't know, there's not anything to spoil, so there's no intrigue really, because they can't keep a secret, they can't... I actually would have preferred if the movie hadn't shown us this kid's powers at all. They just kept telling us, oh, he's special. What, was it campy or something? It, no, it wasn't even campy. It just was half-assed and inconsistent. Mm -hmm. and like the rules or something? Yeah, so you have, so yeah, so Race to Witch Mountain, their plot special kid has to get, these kids get to a certain location, oh, and they have more. to outrun the government. That's what this movie was. Okay. Kid has to outrun the government, get to the special location in time. Um, so there's where Adam Driver comes in. Um, so, I mean, there, there's other stuff, and honestly, the cast was great. Like, they were fine, and they did what they could, which was half the time they were just told to, like, stare in wonderment at this kid, like, but, uh... <laughs> what? What does that even mean? Oh, my God, that was, like, half the movie. It was like, oh, my God. Stare at this kid. This kid. But, but the kid was What's actually... What's the kid doing? The, the He's kid just had, like, why are you staring at me? Well, the kid had some great gravitas, because he basically had to act like this mature adult figure in a 10-year-old's body, but um, <laughs> as all these adults, like, talk about how great he is. So I mean, he 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 carried weight with this role, but I don't think anyone really knew what the role was. It wasn't defined, and it pissed me off. And everyone else walked out of the movie being like, "Oh my God, Jeff Nichols needs okay. to make more sci-fi." This was we amazing. That's what I want to talk to you about. Why do you think people love it so much? Because you are kind of the minority, right? They either love it because from what they, we figure out from the they, festival, because they feel like they have to. You mean like the invitation? <laughs> oh, that movie. Well, no, I mean, there's definitely sort of a crowd. It, it's weird because it's an indie movie, so I know there's going to be a lot of people who just don't see this movie. Like, it's it's not like some big blockbuster. Sure. Um, but there is kind of the sense. I don't. I mean, hipsters. So hipsters. Not to say that everyone who loves this movie is a hipster, but I mean, you've seen it. There's this this band, and they're the it band, but they're also not supposed to be so big that it's uncool to like them. Mm -hmm. But all the people who like them are doing it because it's kind of cool to like it because maybe one leader in that pack, Tim Lee, maybe, I don't know. But I didn't, I didn't call anything He's out that cool. just, He's He is cool. cool. He is cool. And he usually does have really great recommendations. But I like him. I don't know. The people that are saying this one is great, I think they're only saying it because they heard other people say it was great and they haven't. They just kind of bought into that without really thinking it through. And if you walk away from this movie and think about it, like, the more I thought about this movie, the more angry I got. Like, yeah, I you were pissed. Talking. There was a, another website, Boo and Howdy, <laughs> yeah. like, and we were waiting to do a round table, and you told that guy, you really crushed that guy. Well, it's, it's you, I mean, I, thought, I think it was well, a day the, well, the other thing, too, is during the screen, as I mentioned before, there's this excitement and energy level, and it's hard during a film festival to walk out of a movie and say that sucked because you can't. Like it, like it almost is painful. Like I get guilty, and I'm like, oh, but that person—they're right there, they're next to me, and they worked really hard. Um, so I get a little bit guilty. So, and I think yeah, it happens. Yeah. Like there's that audience buy-in, everyone's cheering again. Mm -hmm. um, there's those local go, buy go. you know. So everyone else is excited. Right. So you're excited, but once that energy wears off, and you can think about it, it objectively, you're like, that was really flawed. Like mm -hmm. even the effects weren't that great, or something, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. So that movie. <sighs> No, uh, don't buy in. It's it's not special. Nothing special. Nothing next. Special. You're, you're waiting for that. You're waiting for that. <laughs> okay, the, let's go from the film. Well, I guess we should keep it on. Well, spotlight, you know? well, while we're talking about the local buying, it, it's kind of interesting because Midnight Special. That's one that everybody loved. It seemed like during the screening. Mm, I don't. Did you just? Are you going to? Everybody wants some. From oh no, I am transitioning. Okay. It's a weird transition. Okay. I know. But, like I said, Linklater, another Austin local, okay. he was the opening night film. Um, this was one, I honestly, my friends who actually saw it before, South by, this wasn't, I mean, it was a premiere, but there were a lot of people who already saw screeners of it. My friends who watched it on their own through screeners, they actually didn't like it. 
And then they watched it again with the crowd, and they said, wow, this movie actually got a lot better. Right, because of an Austin crowd, you think, though? Well, I don't know. So, Linklater's kind of an interesting director. I feel like you either love him or hate him. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed this one because I felt like it got back to the more of the comedic Linklater. Not to say, like, this is a knee slap or every scene or something, but it's fun. It's fun. I mean, it's no dazed and confused, but it gets kind of back to that vibe of <sighs> these are people just living life, hanging out and having fun. I mean, um, everybody wants some. I actually thought it was really perfect and fitting for South by because there were some amazing one liners um, that were just like perfect metaphors for South by. Like there's one scene where this guy, um, he did this amazing baseball hit chop with a with an axe at one point and like split a baseball in half and it was a really cool scene and he said something along the lines of i'm having the best day of my life until tomorrow mm -hmm. and it was such kind of like a brotastic arrogant thing to say but that? also so perfect yeah. you know like but i think it's happy that it, he got was happy and he loves his life and that's kind of what sapphire is like each day gets more insane than the previous one. So you're having like an amazing best day mm -hmm. until tomorrow, each day of this festival. So, I, so stuff like that I just thought was amazing and perfect. And the music's great. I mean, it had a lot of the stuff. I'm going to go back to Days and Confused. Not as good as Days and Confused, but it has so many of those elements that, Can that you made, compare people, the two? made people love that one. Can you compare the two? I mean, there, there's stuff in there that you could compare. Like, you have your, your smart stoner and, you know, yeah, but, you manage this. But vaguely, you're saying. Uh, I think they're different They're different enough movies that I wouldn't. Like, it, I don't want to make Linklater sound like a one-trick pony that can only do Days and Confused to be mm -hmm. successful, but... I'd much rather have him having fun and describing these little scenes in life and these little tangents as they right. kind of talk about <clears> the movie. <throat> well, everything doesn't have to be important, I think. And when it comes to yeah. film, I don't think everything has to be important. Things can just be enjoyable. And yeah. That, you know, and that can be good enough. Yeah, definitely. So how about we go to our favorite so we, a film that we saw together that we both like. What was, what would that been? Hmm. Well, we saw a lot of really good films together. Which, but I'm talking about Wallers. Uh, well, <laughs> so the movie's called Hunt for the Wilder People. That's, that's right. Um, honestly, oh, sorry, that's right. Uh, well, the movie was amazing, but for me, the best part wasn't even the movie. Oh, you're talking about the introduction? Yeah, so this was one of those ones where it's kind of funny, like South By, you have all these little special things, like mm -hmm. the cast is there, the director's there. This one, nobody was able to be there because it's, it's a movie from New Zealand, like the director mm -hmm. lives in New Zealand, it's kind of hard. The guy who did, uh... Eagle vs. the Shard. What we do in the shadows. Um, yeah, so he filmed a special introduction that was unique to South by. I hope he puts it out as like a DVD feature or something. I know, he was so great. I mean, the guy. How many people were saying like that was just as good as the film? Just oh, as the, intro. I mean, the dude was hilarious. He just mm -hmm. sort of talks. He would kind of like look off to the side like he had. He was like, just a friend and he didn't explain like, it either. I'm, well, he, was, he would make like side jokes like, I'm clearly not reading anything and I have this all me memorized, mm -hmm. but I mean, he did that so much better than what I just did. Right. <laughs> but I, I, he would make these little jokes and just kind of talk and he rambled basically for mm -hmm. 20 minutes. It was great. I loved how he says, it's just like, people are about to go see it. It was talking about Canada. It's like, you have to see it first. So you're special. <laughs> oh, he was adorable. And he was. He's always so great. I didn't realize because I've seen him. I didn't know the face. I mean, I knew, you know, oh, yeah. the guy well, himself. Oh, yeah, he some of his movies. Yeah, no, he was an Eagle versus Shark, and he, I think he was one of the main, he was one of the vampires in What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah. So, if, I mean, it's it's definitely a, a different style of humor than what we have in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, right but it's pretty accessible. Ah? Uh, ah? Uh, <laughs> Sam Neill. Yes, yeah, Sam, Sam Neill. Oh. What do you want to say about Sam Neill? Legend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam Neill in this film. I don't think anything bad about Sam Neill. Of course you could as you should it. Sam Neill basically plays Dr. Grant, but not a very educated Dr. Grant who just kind of lives in the woods and he's grumpy. He's grumpy cat. Well, the plot of this movie is so And he doesn't like kids. But it works because every scene is just so enjoyable. I know. Like, <laughs> it's funny. The dialogue's so great. It was, it was, I love how, how well written it was. Like each line, the, 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 the humor is so subtle. And it's just like the, the line where, because they, they drop off Oh. Well, the plot of this yeah, movie, just a quick it. gist of it, Hunt for the Builder People, it's about this kid 
He's led a troubled life, bounced around from foster homes. He lawyered goes, up. Goes to live with this um, family who ends up being this per the perfect couple to take him in. Like, mm -hmm. the mom is just perfect. And I'm, is this a spoiler? I guess I have to if we're going to talk about anything in the movie. She dies within like five minutes. Yeah, of I don't think that's much of a spoiler. Um, so so the, the lady who takes him in, who was kind of the big um, reason for even bringing in a foster kid, she, she passes well, she's, away. Right. And her, well, she her brings in broken people. Yeah, she brings in broke, like her husband, mm -hmm. the, the, Sam Neill. And he's such a curmudgeon. And at first, he's just kind of like, ah, oh, what do I do now? We have this kid. And he's like, I guess you're going back in the system. But the kid really loved him and loved the life there. Mm -hmm. um, and he had heard this legend about the Wilder people mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, New Zealand. And so he tries to run away. Doesn't do a very good job of it. Sam Neill tracks him down. But at some point, Sam Neill. And nothing happened. Like he wasn't actually this, but with the, and the humor makes this work. But he it's kind of labeled as a pedophile. <laughs> so he's all this pederast. He, he, he pederast. He's on the lamb now <laughs> with this kid. And the kid's like, this is great because yeah. that's what he wanted the entire time. And he says some some well, he's like weird this game that he's doesn't like, help Sam Neill at all. <laughs> oh yeah, so. that, that was a great scene. But he's like this gangster kid, <laughs> and I, I love some lines where Sanders is like, or no, it was the mother. It's just like, so who are your friends? Tupac? <laughs> yeah. But but it, you're right, it does remind me of, of Sam Neill and Jurassic Park. Cause yeah, he's, well, now he's, he's like a one. He's stuck with these kids. And, yeah. But he kind of loves we gotta them. Get he them takes, he takes care of them. He's got to get them through the, the jungle. Saves them from New, New Zealand's a T Rex, I guess. So I don't know. But it, was, it, was, it had a heart. Like, it was oh, of course. such a sweet film. And this was kind of an adjustment from his other films where just kind of straight up comedy, I felt like. The, the this one had some heavier subtle. elements, and I got a little misty eyed uh, towards some of the scene. Like, it, it, yeah. and I'm not really big on like the sappy films, but they kind of do a <laughs> blend to the point. It's like you really do. You love the characters so much. Even the the two cops are kind of douchebags. I love them too. Yeah. Uh, no, it it was a quirky movie, and I. It, it ended up getting a lot of second, multiple screenings as buzz screenings. So oh, South by does this thing where they okay. do buzz screenings, and if, if people review a film well, they'll, they'll repeat it. And because originally this one was just scheduled to show once, um, but it, yeah, I think a lot of people left this one with just great vibes. Like, mm -hmm. I, I felt great. Oh, killed. I mean, like you, you were talking about earlier, just the crowds and stuff. Like, this was yeah, especially was, hyped up crowd. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone was just smiling. Like, the, and there wasn't even anyone there to to influence. It's not like the director is watching us and like, oh, these people are reacting poorly to my yeah. movie. So yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel pressured to to like it. I just felt so great watching it. I can't wait to to find a copy or a DVD. So, yeah. set. so I hope it. I hope it gets screened or picked up somewhere. Oh, of US. course it will. Like, I mean, that guy's is a monster. Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 funny. Like uh, South by, you have some of these huge blockbuster movies that you know they're going to get film releases. Um, I mean, last year, Furious Seven was screened during South by. So there's there's more that, that, that actually. Help. I think they're trying to create buzz. Yeah, I mean, that's really the purpose. 